Hello there. This is Robin Bremer, the author of, the best-selling author of over 34 books and growing and self-publishing coach and ordained minister and the creator of Kingdom Live Challenge. Yay! <laughs> anyway, today I want to share with you the Kingdom Challenge Live, which is overcoming and commanding in current events. Now, a lot of us have a problem um, with TV. TV seems to dictate our life, what's happening in the world, what's happening in our community. And because of the things that are happening, we do or don't do certain things. Well, today I'm going to talk about how to talk to your TV. That's right. How to talk to your TV. Your TV is not... Um, the boss. Your TV is not the thing that is prophesying to you the, your future or putting fear into you, your, your future. Your TV is supposed to be used to spread the gospel to show the goodness of God. So when your TV, when you see something on the TV that upsets you something on the news for example the Orlando shootings the Dallas shootings ISIS and all that stuff you're afraid to fly on a plane because uh, there's a plane takeover or something like that then you need to be start talking to your TV yes talking to your TV this is what you should should be saying to your TV when a news event comes on that potentially affects you or that you don't like what you do is you point to your TV if somebody else is in the room you might not want to do this you might want to do it under your breath but if you're alone in the house <laughs> or the room you want to point to your TV some, say something's happening in your community you'll say no not in my community you won't I take authority over you I forbid you to operate in my community I command uh, that spirit of terrorism to stop in Jesus name I thank you father that you reveal hidden things uh, uh, intentions that you uh, break apart the things that the devil the enemy would try to do to hurt kill and destroy and you speak to the TV you speak to the TV and you say what the Word of God says what the Word of God what the blood of Jesus has already accomplished you take authority over the spirit behind the event the spirit behind the reporting the false spirit that's reporting trumped up lies or uh, speaking um, deception to get you to sway one way or another or to believe one thing or another you talk to the spirit behind the event the spirit behind the broadcast the spirit behind whatever is going on and you command them to stop by the authority given to you in Jesus Christ and by the power of Jesus in you now I also want to talk about a little bit about what to do in a real-life emergency and share with you some of the stuff that happened in my life and what I did and but first before I go for that I want to talk about how to die or how to kill a person <laughs> yes how to kill a person or how to die and you do that by believing these things by believing that everything that happens happens because it's God's will that means you're not gonna fight back that means you're not gonna resist you're just gonna roll over and let it happen let her rip roll over and let her rip uh, because you believe whatever happens uh, it's the sovereignty of God it happens so that is one of the biggest lies out there that's why we have an enemy and uh, we're supposed to know what the Word of God is and what the Word of God gave us and if you don't know the will of God, <coughs> excuse me, you are going to be just rolling over and receiving whatever happens, happens. Now, <clears throat> if that were the case, if you really, really believe that, why would you go to the doctor if you were sick? Just stay sick and die. It's God's will. Why would you uh, seek to get out of fear and not be so stressed if that was God's will? So... It's stupid to think that everything that happens happens is God's will, God's sovereignty, and God allows it. First of all, God gave us authority and all power and all dominion over all the earth, under the earth, 
and in heaven. And if we do not take that power and that authority and apply it, then what happens to us is going to happen because we're not going to resist the devil and he's not going to flee from us. You have to know what's the devil and what's God. If it's not like heaven on earth, it's not from God. If it comes to kill, steal, and destroy, it's not from God. Now the second thing, the way you can kill another person or that you can die is surrender to God's will. Say, Father, um, I have cancer, but whatever your will is, that is not God's will for you to have cancer or sickness or disease or poverty or lack or fear. God sent Jesus to pay the price for all those things. things. So there's no way that you should be experiencing them. If you are experiencing them, it's because you have a lack of knowledge and you haven't applied the principles or you haven't applied authority and you don't know the Word of God. The Word of God says my people die for lack of knowledge and that's in Ho I believe that's in Hosea. If you are going to a church that doesn't have signs, wonders, and miracles happen, if you're going to a church that just teaches you how to be good, but doesn't teach you how to have victory or how to win or how to heal people, how to get people saved, does not have no supernatural power in it, it I, I wonder if the pastor's even saved because when you're saved, you act like your daddy. And he's a supernatural God. So it's not about being good, doing good, and doing right. It's about a relationship with God. It's a relationship with your daddy. And then right behavior follows. <coughs> now, the Word of God says death and life is in the power of your tongue. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. What happens to you happens because it's your responsibility. It is your job to take authority, to take dominion over these things and not allow them to happen. Okay, if you're having sickness, disease, poverty, lack, or fear, or any of these problems, and you haven't taken authority and dominion over to change them after they happen, before they happen, in the midst of them happening, then there's some things that we have to look at. You see, spiritual law is spiritual law. It's just like physical law. If you jumped off of a building, there's no doubt in your mind that you would fall because that's, spirit, that's physical law. And you have to believe and know spiritual laws just as much as you know and believe physical laws. Okay? So, if you have the things happening in your life that Jesus set you free from, delivered you from, and gave you victory over, then you have to think, what spiritual law am I breaking? And here's some spiritual laws. Love. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I'm not walking in love. I, I am not walking in love. That's why this happened to me. But it's not just about you. It's about God. It's about knowing that God loves you. Do you know the love of God? The love of God casts out all fear. You have to believe the love of God that God has toward you. And when you do, it's easier for you to walk in love with other people. Are you breaking the law of strife? It says where there's strife, there's confusion in every evil thing. Is there strife in your life? Do you cause strife? Do you gossip? Do you put someone else down? Do you know what the definition of gossip is? The definition of gossip is anything that you say to another person that makes them think less of someone else. I think that's a really awesome, um, got flies biting me here. <laughs> I think that's a really awesome, perfect definition of gossip. So, is there strife in your life? Are you causing strife? Are you around strife? Are you getting stressed out because of strife? Those, the, these spiritual laws that I'm talking about right now are laws that can override everything that the blood of Jesus paid for you to have, if you don't have it, you could be breaking one of these spiritual laws because you don't have to earn what the blood of Jesus paid for you to have. It's all by grace. It's all free. It's not by your behavior or lack of doing things or not doing things. You're always righteous and good enough to receive healing. You're always righteous and good enough to prosper. You're always righteous and good enough to have abundance in your life, to have peace, to have power. Okay, now here's, a, here's another natural law, or here's another law. The natural law of eating, exercising, and rest. 
are you breaking those laws? Because if you are breaking those laws, if you are eating white shower, white, bleh, white flour, white sugar, if you're eating canned goods and packaged stuff, you're feeding yourself a lot of trash and it's over killing your body basically. If you're not exercising, if you're not getting rest, those are natural laws. They'll bring on sickness and disease. But you know what? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from that law. But if you don't know that, you could get healed and you could just turn around and a couple years later be just as sick as you were before because you're putting trash in your mouth. You are actually what you eat. Whatever you eat becomes uh, feeds your cells in your body and they become your body. So what are you feeding yourself spiritually by the church you go to and what are you feeding yourself physically? Now remember your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You should be taking care of your body. You should be exercising, getting rest, eating right, eating healthy, finding out what's good for your body and what's not. Okay, I'm off my soapbox on that. Okay, here's another law that you could be breaking. Are you fornicating? Are you committing adultery? Are you into homosexual? Homosexuality? Are you into lust? Perversion? All those things are spiritual laws that you are breaking against your physical body and when you do those things you're going to get sexually transmitted diseases they're going to have uh, um, the homosexual community transsexual community has lost their identity they've been deceived and they've been stolen from so they don't really know who they are they can be male one day feel the female the next day their very core of their being has been stolen from them their very identity has been stolen from them and by the devil and deceived them and lied to them and so there is a very high rate of suicide among that group of people. Uh, uh, adultery, fornication, you got sexually transmitted diseases, homosexuality, you got, you got sicknesses and diseases and all kinds of things happening. So you're breaking spiritual law with your physical body, which then you're going to have to believe God for your healing. But then the devil will come on, come against you and say, hey, look at you committed adultery. You deserve to get the sexually transmitted disease. Or you shot up. You deserve to die of um, hepatitis or whatever. Okay? The devil will condemn you. You will feel that condemnation. Your heart will not be right then because your heart will be condemning you. And you won't receive what the blood of Jesus paid for you to have. So be, be wise and don't break. Don't sin. Because when you sin, you're setting yourself up. For the devil to condemn you and to convince you that he has a right to put sickness and disease on you. But I don't care what you did. The devil never, ever, ever has a legal right to do things to you because the blood of Jesus paid for it. If you don't understand what the blood of Jesus paid for, then you're going to receive what the devil is offering you. And you're going to say you earned it or you deserved it. And you're going to get sick and maybe die. So... Sin leads to death. So that's why we don't want to sin. Sin also separates us from God. But it doesn't separate God from us. God is always with us. We especially need Him when we sin. Because He tells us how to get out of the sin. The Holy Spirit says, don't do this, do this, do that, do that. He gives us directions. Because we live by the Spirit, not by the law. So you want to hear God's voice. And you don't want to be condemned by the devil. And not... And be overridden with the devil's voice instead of God's voice. So you don't want to break those spiritual and physical laws. What about fear and stress? As a man thinketh, so is he. So if you're in fear about something and stressed about something, you're believing something that ha hasn't happened yet is going to happen. You're not trusting in God. And you're going to, again, hear the devil's voice louder than God. He's going to be condemning you, telling you you're not worthy. You have no right to this. And he's a liar. He's a thief. Unforgiveness is a big one. Unforgiveness causes all kinds of sicknesses and diseases and stress in your body. Um, the only thing about unforgiveness that I want to say really strong is the only person that you are hurting yourself is yourself. When you don't forgive anybody, you're allowing that person who hurt you to have control over you. Even though they don't even know it and they're not even there and they probably might even have forgotten about it. Offense and unforgiveness. It kills, steals, and destroys. So... Don't take offense. Forgive people. It's just not worth not forgiving them.
Okay, and a simple lack of knowledge is a spiritual law. My people die for lack of knowledge. If you don't know what the blood of Jesus paid for, if you don't know what the blood of Jesus did, then you're not going to uh, receive. You're not going to receive it. You're not going to think you have a right to it. You're not going to even know it's available. So you need to go to a church that teaches the Word of God, that that demonstrates the Word of God, demonstrates, demonstrates, demonstrates. If your church does not demonstrate the Word of God, get out of there, run, flee. Find a church that demonstrates the Word of God, that people get healed, saved, delivered, baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak with tongues. That is part of your armor and your weapon is for you. Every Christian is the sword of the spirit it's how you do warfare so important uh watch my video before this on um the armor of god and prayer okay prayer is power in your mouth in your mouth in my mouth prayer is power in our mouth now remember if you watch video one two and three i believe this is number four or five um I took the word prayer and made an antonym. I always have problems with that word. You know, P-R-A-Y, and then each letter stands for something. And I think that's a antonym, but that doesn't sound right. Anyway, so P is for power, for partnership, and for promises. Okay, you are, prayer is partnership with God, and it's taking his promises, and it's using that power. R stands for righteousness. And responsibility it is your responsibility to change anything on this earth that does not line up with the Word of God sickness disease poverty lack and fear it's your responsibility not God he's not going to do it you have to pe become partners with him in prayer by partners the Holy Spirit living in you is the power and Jesus gave you the authority now you have to speak it and command it. Study Ephesians 3. That's an awesome scripture. It says that we're supposed to tell the principalities, powers, mights, and dominions in heavenly places what the will of God is, the wisdom of God, what he accomplished and enforced and accomplished on the cross. That is our job. And then A in the word prayer means authority. You have authority now. Not when you get to heaven. Not someday. Not in the sweet by and by. You have authority now. And you need to use it. God said that the kingdom of God is in us in power. And the kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. God's government. God's power. It's like the United States has a government, a right, and authority to do certain stuff. Well, I have even a bigger right than that because I have the kingdom of God living in me. The government of God living in me. And I am partners with him. And my responsibility is to change anything on earth that is not like it is in heaven by speaking it and commanding it by partnering with God believing the power is in me in the form of the Holy Spirit the kingdom and the authority has been given to me to change all these things and to bring heaven on earth the kingdom of God your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and God wants us to take the kingdom and use it he says if you're not giving fruit of it he'll give it he, get, he took it from the uh, Jewish people and gave it to the nation of born-again spirit-filled Christians because they were not using the kingdom of God and producing fruit or harvest with it so you have to use the power and the authority you just don't talk about it you just don't pray about it. you got to go out and do it now what gives you the right to command to change any situation well it's by spiritual laws and part of your challenge in this uh, broadcast is to find the scriptures that I'm talking about in this section right now death and life is in the power of your tongues that's I believe Proverbs 18 21 I'm not sure and in Deuteronomy 18 I believe it talks about you choose life or death it's up to you to choose life and death if you get into a life and death situation you need to choose life you need to say out of your mouth I will not die today I choose life life so important the next scripture i believe it's uh matthew mark 11 if two of you agree on earth about anything you shall have what you agree about uh, and, I, and i that might be the wrong scripture it's up a little bit further possibly and then mark 11 um, in mark 
you can have what you say if you speak to the mountain, but you have to believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. And that's the spirit of faith. That's believing it, so you speak it. You already have been given everything that you need for life and godliness. God doesn't withhold anything from you. It's right there in the spirit realm. And the spirit realm is the parent to the physical realm. Every, the spirit realm was real and created the physical realm. It was operating before the physical realm. So everything in the physical realm is created by the spirit realm, by words. And so everything obeys words. God said in the beginning, let there be life. And he created everything by, cre by speaking words. And he gave us that power and authority. And he said that we can have what we say. So by having that power and that authority, we can change physical things with our words. Go to my website, robinbremer.net, or YouTube, um, Feed My People Joy, and or even just type in, uh, you can just type this in Google search. Just type in the rice experiment with a twist. And you'll see an experiment that I did with rice and prove to you how I could change the physical content or whatever, the physical makeup of rice by speaking to it. You'll see the three bowls of rice and everything I did. So check that out. Now, the other way, reason that we can have, we have authority and dominion and that we can change things is we reap what we sow. That's a spiritual law. We can have what we believe. That's a spiritual law. We have all authority on earth, in earth, and in heaven. Jesus gave that to us. He's not going to take it back. Okay? He also in Genesis told us to subdue, rule, and have dominion. If there's nothing to have dominion over, like some people believe, well, God's sovereign. He can do what he wants. Yes, he can. And what he wants is, I give man all authority, power, and dominion. Now you go, multiply, be fruitful, subdue, and have dominion. He's not going to take that back. Not till our 7,000 year lease is up. Okay? So, you subdue, rule, and have dominion. That's the spiritual law. You command ye the works of my hands. In other words, we are his hands, and we command the works of his hands. I command cancer to go in Jesus' name. Okay? We speak it. We command it. We don't just say, oh, Father, I pray in Jesus' name, heal this person. If it be your will, that's not the way to pray. we pray. We command. We speak to it. And again, Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you, that you're supposed to use it. You're supposed to bring fruit from it. And we rule because we are righteous. No matter what I do or you do, if you have asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life and received his free gift, you are righteous. Not because you earned it, but because you're in Christ Jesus and everything he is, you are. And he's in you. And you have been given his righteousness and he has taken your sin. He became sin for us so that we could become righteousness. You are righteous because he gave you his righteousness, not because of your behavior. So by the right of righteousness, at any point of time in your life, you have power and authority to heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse leopards, raise the dead, and preach the good news to the poor. It means that we can be prosperous. At any time, we have the right to those things. We don't have to earn them. We don't have to qualify. We don't have to be good enough. Now, if they aren't happening in your life, what you want to do is you want to find out why. Father, am I breaking a spiritual law? What what do I not know? What do I need to change in order to walk in this that you have given it to me? Because I know that, God, you are not withholding it from me. And it's right there in front of me. And I want it and it's mine. Show me, Lord. So these are questions to ask yourself when you're walking in authority. These are very important. If you could remember these, you can change the world. Number one, was it paid for? Number two, is it like heaven on earth? Number three, who's in charge in this situation? Number four, does it kill, steal, or destroy something, someone? And if all those answers are yes, it was paid for, no, it is not like heaven on earth, I'm in charge, and it kills, steals, and destroys, you need to pray, you need to take authority and dominion over it. Now. Um, if you want a download of my Kingdom Challenge um, outline here and the challenge and then a special, I have a special gift for you this time, uh, go uh, sign up on this page on uh, one of my pages to sign up on 
live and you'll receive the outline it'll be sent to you and you can also uh, sign up to get a free month every I have 34 books and growing and every month you can receive one of my books for free as a PDF form and then you can go to Amazon and give me a review works for both of us or you can if you're an author you can download our free report uh, self-publishing without tears tears on Amazon which will also be at the bottom of the outline here so my name is Robin Bremer and um, sign up to get the outlines and the challenge the challenge today is to keep a journal and uh, when you watch TV I want you to write down when you if you watch I want you to pray and fast I want you to fast not watching TV and I and I want you to pray when you do watch TV and write it down what things you see on TV that you immediately notice and become aware that is it's not those questions that we asked at the end is not heaven on earth you're uh, God's not in charge of it it's, and it's uh, kill stealing and destroying and so on I want you to point to the TV or in your mind out loud preferably if nobody's around and speak to the TV and say no you will not happen to my community no I will not allow this I command that spirit behind that to be quiet I command hidden things to be revealed and so on I want you, your challenge is when you see the stuff on TV to speak to it and change it and then I would like for you to uh, write your comments on what you learned write in your journal and write your comments under this video what you learned what you changed and how you've grown from that because I don't want you to just sit here and listen to me talk to you I want you to um, be able to go out and change that situation and I remember here I did want to share with you some of the things that I did. I want to really quick give you, excuse me, my nose itches, to give you some, um, some, some events that happened in my life and some emergencies and how I responded. First of all, we were with, we were in Alabama, two o'clock in the morning. We were the only white people there, at um, a breakfast restaurant. It was very scary in a sense because everybody had gold teeth. They had pants that hung all the way down, chains and everything. I mean, it was, it was just really tough, tough neighborhood. And they were mostly teens or a little bit older. And um, they were all uh, at this restaurant eating. Some, a lot of them were outside. And somebody came in and yelled, he has a gun. Well, all these kids were trained and have this lifestyle of shootings regular. So they all dove under the table. The guys dove under the table. Most of the girls went to the bathroom. And Alan and me sat there and we ate. And we said, in Jesus' name, we just take authority over this situation. We're not going to allow, uh, we're not going to allow this to uh, hurt us or happen here. We just bind that spirit in Jesus' name. And uh, some of the kids were hiding behind our car. And so we just kind of kept on eating and sat there and watched them. And then some of them came in and said some stuff and almost started some fights and then went out and they jumped in their cars and started fighting, said he shot somebody or something and started looking for somebody. So that was one. We were involved in a shooting. And the other one was my son had a motorcycle accident. My husband called me and says, and he doesn't wear, he didn't, doesn't wear a helmet. In Jesus' name, he wears a helmet now. Um, but he was in a motorcycle accident. My husband called me and he says, Nathan's been in a motorcycle accident. Don't freak out. He's okay. But they want us to come to the hospital. Those are not words a mother wants to hear. So I said immediately, in Jesus' name, my son will live and not die. I take authority over any spirit that would try to kill him in Jesus' name. And I speak peace over the situation. And we got in our car. Uh, actually, my husband was at work. And he went from work there. And I was home. I had no money. I had no gas in my car. I had to go knock on my neighbor's door and ask to borrow money to put gas in my car to go to the hospital. All the way to the hospital, I prayed in the spirit. So I wouldn't know how to respond. Oh, I've got to itch my nose here. <laughs> so I wouldn't know how to respond. And he had some serious things going on, but he made it through. The other thing is one day I woke up and it looked like my dog was dead laying aside of me. And, I mean, I couldn't get any response from him. He just laid there limp. Uh, no ear twitches, no whisker twitches, nothing. So I said, 
to my husband. I said, I think Sparky's dead. And um, he, and we were poking him and everything, and he wasn't moving. So I just said, in Jesus' name, I speak life. I, I command the spirit of death to leave. I speak life into your body, and I command you to rise up and go death. Rise up and, and live, and death go in Jesus' name. And so my husband took him to the vet. By the time he got to the vet, my dog was perfectly healthy, and I felt like a fool. I was thinking, did I actually raise the dog from the dead? Or was he just not responding for responding for some reason? And of course, the devil would whisper in my ear, "Oh, he wasn't dead. You just weren't looking hard enough. He just was lazy, you know." But it doesn't matter. I had practice. If he was dead or not, he's alive now. And and then another bad experience that I had was my mom and dad both died of cancer. Now my dad, I got to lead to the Lord before he died. Two weeks before he died, I was his caretaker, and. Uh, I got to lead him to the Lord and he would scream in pain and I would come running out. I stayed with him those two weeks and I would come running out and I would command the pain to go in Jesus name and I would pray over him. At that time, I did not know that I had authority and dominion over cancer that I could tell cancer to go. I just knew I had authority over pain and I just prayed, kind of hit and miss prayers. And my mom, I was her caretaker. Um, every four hours I had to give her a, a shot of morphine. Uh, for the pain and I didn't lead her to the Lord and I didn't command cancer to go because I didn't I was ignorant at that time so those are uh, I don't know where my mom is right now um, but I do know where my dad is and those are things that uh, I did um, my cat wants to come up here with me this is Caesar Caesar say hello to everybody He's 14 years old and going strong, going to live to 23, happy and healthy. Um, anyway, those are some situations. Those are how I took over the situations and circumstances and changed things. And you can do the same thing. Get knowledge because this end times that we're living in, you need to know what is going on, where to go, where not to go, what to do, and how to respond. So if you're in an emergency situation, um, remember take authority don't panic take authority you have authority over that spirit remember every evil thing there's a spirit behind them you're not your war is not with people your war is not with people your war is with the spirit deceiving them lying to them and and motivating them and telling them what to do giving them direction so bind that spirit you have that authority and my name is Robin Bremer my website is robinbremer.net uh, click on the and subscribe to my live uh, feed up there in the corner right there <laughs> and um, Also get in my reading club so you get a free book if you like what you hear and it's changing your life and um, I will talk to you next week. Have a blessed day Say goodbye Peter.